Hi, welcome to Snakes and Adders. Today we're continuing our intermediate series by discussing these common boas and the Central American boas, which all fall under the Latin name Boa Constrictor Imperata. They have a huge natural range from Sonora, Mexico, all the way down through Central America into northern Colombia and northwest Ecuador. They are highly variable. They come in all different shapes, colours and sizes, but they all fall under the Latin name Boa Constrictor Imperata. They are not to be confused with the true red tail boas. A lot of times we'll see common boas labelled as a red tail and they're simply not. The red tails occur on the east of the Andes Mountains, in, mainly in Guyana, uh, Peru, Suriname and Brazil. These guys occur on the west of the Andes and as good as snakes are and adaptable as they are, they haven't quite worked out to cross the Andes yet. So they're definitely a distinct group. These are slightly smaller than the true red tails. A Colombian boa, which is what most people are going to keep when we think of those, because a lot of the genes, whether it be motley, albino, such jungle, such like, they all occurred in the Colombian range. Your female's going to reach maybe eight, nine feet maximum, uh, and a male will do between six and seven feet. Generally speaking, the Colombian boas are incredibly tame. They're wonderful snakes. We consider them the, the prime choice for the next step snake. You know, you've, you've maybe cut your teeth on a corn snake. You want something slightly bigger. This is the species that we're going to go to because of the even temper, the hardiness, readiness to feed, and, and the very few problems that they actually present. So if we were going to set up a common boa, generally we're going to be keeping them in a viv. Remember, I'm... I'm I'm not really doing these videos for breeders, I'm doing them for people who are keeping them as a pet. And an adult common boa really is going to need a minimum of a 5-2-2 viv. Um, at that size, it's far easier to heat that sort of uh, surroundings with a ceramic heat emitter. Generally, we would use a ceramic heat emitter with a day-night thermostat where we can control the daytime high and the nighttime low. Basking area temperatures during the day want to be about 32 to 33 degrees and then at night that can drop to about 26, 27 degrees. They're ready feeders, they'll take a different, an array of different sizes of prey throughout their life but they'll feed readily on mice, rats and eventually guinea pigs as well in the big adult females. Depending on where they're from also changes their um, appearance and there's a lot of different boas out there which all fall under the boa uh, constrictor imperata monica. So some of the common ones that I'll discuss in, like with you are Crawl K and Cork K off the coast of Belize. Cork K are believed to be some of the smallest of all boas. Adult breeding females rarely re uh, weigh more than over a kilo in weight, which is incredible considering the size of this girl, and she's classed as the same species. Some efforts have been made to sort of classify them, but the islands are so close to the coastline that they don't say that they're genetically sort of distinct enough from the mainland counterparts. But if you saw them in the flesh, you'd think, well, there's no way that they're the same snake. Uh, other island forms or localities that are commonly available on the market would include Chaos de la Cochinos or Hog Island Boas. Hog Island Boas are simply gorgeous. They're a naturally occurring hypomelanistic boa um, and they change in colour from like a dark grey to almost a white grey. It's amazing and they naturally sort of fire up at night. They're fabulous snakes. Smaller generally in build, certainly in their wild form than their mainland counterparts through captive breeding and the readiness to feed and the fact that people can get the females up to a bigger size over the generations they've grown and you know they're approaching the seven seven and a half foot mark for a girl now whereas in the wild they'll be a little over four or five feet long also over there you've got the Roatan Island which is up it's, it's still part of the La Bahia Islands um, which the the chaos de la Cochinos is, is part of as well but they are far more like the mainlands, and actually the Roatans are incredibly hard to get hold of as true Roatans. I've 25 years of keeping, I've only had one Roatan boa and about 75 to 100 Hog Island boas. Also, there's the Corn Islands, which is, uh, or Isla del Mays, which is off the coast of Nicaragua. But then there's mainland Nicaraguan boas as well. Um, there's also uh, the Mexican boas that will occur occasionally, Costa Ricans, which are one of my favourites, they're gorgeous, really nice, almost like 
an orange gold saddle on this weird sort of grey purple certainly as babies they're, they're, they're really interesting looking and then El Salvador boas which are quite dark there's different morphs that have uh, um, like occurred as well so you've got like the Sonoran boas they produce the leopards Sonoran boas are small um, obviously being from Sonora and you know semi-arid they are incredibly uh, drought and uh, humidity tolerant so they're not going to have the same issues with shedding that some of their South American counterparts might and what I think that's worth mentioning as well is that what we're dealing with is something that ranges from almost desert regions to full-on rainforest. And some allowance has got to be made for the locality of the boa that you're keeping. And therefore, how am I going to approach its captive environment? Because, you know, it's easy to just put them on newspaper, but let's have a, th a think about it. You know, what I'll do is I'll try and find some climate data and share that with the video as well for some of these different regions. And that might show some of the changes that we've got between the temperatures, relative humidity levels. Also, what you might find is during cycling for breeding is that the northern animals may want to cycle for breeding earlier in the year than the more southern counterparts. And then obviously there's like short brumation periods, generally a... a, a longer cooler night a shorter hotter day um, and that's your trigger you introduce them halfway through this process and off they go the boas once they've ovulated that's a sign that all the over are maturing in the oviduct we don't necessarily remove the male we're going to keep him in and let him keep going and ovulation isn't a sign of pregnancy it's just a sign of getting ready um, once we've had the what's called the post ovulation shed or pos we make a date on the calendar, we count forward 105 days, and this is usually a marker for when they're going to give birth. The female will, will bask a lot, and she may well go off her food. Not always, but I'd say 75% of the time, your female's not going to want feed when she's pregnant. Uh, they give birth to live young, they come out in an embryonic sac and immediately burst out. Uh, the female may massage them with her head to try and get them to wake up. Uh, they... They range in size, obviously, depending on the locality. Some, some of the smaller stuff, like the Sonorans, um, the Cork Ks, Crawl Ks, can be slightly more problematic to get going. But once they're off and running, they feed fine and they come on great. Um, and generally, females, depend, again, depending on where they're from, this girl, for example, she could have anywhere from, say, 20 to 30 young, whereas, obviously, the smaller Sonoran species and Cork Ks we might be either in single figures or only just into the low teens. Um, boa constrictors are fantastic, absolutely fabulous snakes, and well worth consideration. They do vary in temperament. It seems odd, but like the bigger stuff, like the Colombians, generally are far more even in temper. Some of the Central American stuff, particularly Mexicans, some of the El Salvador, some of the Crocs can be snappy. They can, uh, they can have a, a funny temper. Now that's not to say that that's across the board. There will be examples that are tame. But you're now keeping an intermediate species. Truth be told, you may get bit. Deal with it. It's just one of those things. Um, it's not going to be the end of the world. A snake bite's nothing really to worry about. Certainly off boas this size. A few pinpricks, a bit of bruising, and that's it. Well worthy of consideration. Well worthy of keeping. The Latin name that you need to research is Boa Constrictor Imperata. I'll also put a list of the distinct localities on the description so you can look through the La Bahia Islands, Roatan Island, Corn Island, Hog Island. Um, you can also go through El Salvador, Costa Rica, Mexico, Colombia. Um, so, and then obviously something I've not mentioned thus far is the wide range of morphs that are available as well. We've got jungles, we've got albinos, we've got motleys, we've got arabesques, uh, we've got anathristic snows, ghosts hypomelanistic, super-hypomelanistic, uh, leopards, um, in, increased melanin gene, which gives you an almost jet black snake. You know, th the choices now are f so wide compared to when I started. So, uh, yeah, you really can almost get one to match your curtains. Um, but actually, some of my favourite of the boa constrictors are just localities. Nothing flash, just a straight locality that hasn't been messed with, or adulterated in any way to try and make some new morph. You know, a good Costa Rican boa is a fabulous snake. A good Hog Island boa is simply stunning. So well worthy of consideration as that next step snake. These really should be one of your number one choices. I hope you've enjoyed the videos. Keep watching. 
uh, check out the website which is www.snakesnadders.co.uk to see what we're all about. Cheers.